Well, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday's Word. Uh, we're glad that you tuned in and pray that uh, as we study God's Word together, you'll be blessed by what God has to say to each of us. We're still looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, we've, we're calling it Love in Action. That it's not our words, and it's not our feelings, but it's our actions that show love, that agape type love, the love that God shows us, that we need to demonstrate. And so uh, if you have your Bibles, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, we'll be in verse 6. Uh, just to kind of bring you up to where we are, we've uh, looked at these particular characteristics of love. Love is patient. Love is kind, is not jealous. Love does not brag, is not arrogant does not act unbecomingly, is, does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered. And so we've looked at those particular characteristics. Just want to emphasize how important it is for all of us to, to love to the max. You know, even Jesus said, you know how he said that the world would know that we're his disciples? Is that how we love one another? That's how they're going to know and how important it is if that's what they're going to look at, that we love the way we should. We can all say, hey, we love, but unless we look at this list, uh, that's kind of like a checklist, uh, so to speak, to, to know what true love looks like. Otherwise, we just uh, say that we love. You know, they say the, the way to know a counterfeit bill is to really study a, a real one. And then you can pick up on a fake one. And same way with love. If we look at this list, we'll realize and find out if we are loving the way God wants us to love. So if you got your Bibles, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, and we're starting in verse 6, that love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. Uh, the King James says, rejoiceth not in iniquity. Uh, it's, it's not happy over it's sin. It's not happy over anybody else's sin. It doesn't rejoice uh, when sin is done in their life or someone else's life. Um, one way it's demonstrated, I think we even see it in our society. We read Isaiah 5:20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. That's how that verse starts. Um, you know, they those people are rejoicing so much that they're calling what's good. Uh, evil, and then calling what's evil good. Well, we see that a lot uh, as we look around at particular people's views that's changed on what we used to say is sin. It's not sin. They actually rejoice in it. And that's not love. Love doesn't do that. You know, probably the uh, w one of the easiest ways that this is done is the sin of gossip. Gossip is really rejoicing in unrighteousness, really rejoicing in somebody else's unrighteousness. I like what Bill Gothard said as he quoted on this. He said, it doesn't use others' evil to excuse personal weakness. It doesn't say everyone is doing it. In other words, that's really what gossip is really attempting to do. It's excusing our sin by drawing attention to someone else's sin. And that's not love. Love doesn't do that. Love covers uh, listen to what the Bible says about gossip. In Proverbs 18.8, 8, the words of a whisper are like dainty morsels. They go down in the innermost parts of the body. Proverbs 11.13, he who goes about as a tarot bearer reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy conceals a matter. Proverbs 20 verse 19, he who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossip. So it's not only wrong to, uh, to gossip, it's bad to associate with a gossip because they're influencing and, and tainting your mind about somebody else. That's not love. Love seeks to conceal. Uh, love doesn't seek to, to, sh to show off somebody else's sin or to, to bring it to light. Listen to this poem. I, I don't have the author's name. It says, A careless word may kindle strife. A cruel word may wreck a life. Bitter word may hate and steal. A brutal word may smite and kill. A gracious word may smooth the way. 
A joyous word may light the day. A timely word may lessen stress. A loving word may heal and bless. You know, so we need to watch our words, especially words that are against somebody else that we know. You know, um, we're not obviously studying James, but James 3, 9 says about our tongue, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who are made in the likeness of God. You know, our tongue shouldn't just bless the Lord. It should also bless others because they're made in the likeness of God. Uh, matter of fact, that verse goes on to say, from the same mouth come both blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. We shouldn't just, you know, if on Sunday we're blessing the Lord and on Monday we're having a curse and talking bad about somebody else, uh, that ought not be, that ought not come out of the same mouth. Matter of fact, he goes on to say, you know, that bitter water and sweet water doesn't come out the same uh, fountain. <laughs> We've got to watch what we say because love doesn't share somebody else's negatives and share somebody else's uh, sins. It doesn't rejoice in that. Uh, it, it, it doesn't, and there's a certain sense in the flesh that, that the flesh gets some gratification by sharing somebody else's sin as if it makes them feel better about themselves. And the devil loves to do that. But if we do that for anybody, we're not loving others because even 1 Corinthians 8, 1 said, love edifies. So what I'd like you to, what we'd like to do is, is there's four questions we need to ask ourselves when it comes to what we're about to say in regard to somebody else. Uh, and the answer uh, needs to be yes for all four, not just one, but all four of these so we can check what it is to make sure we're not rejoicing in an unrighteousness or sharing something that we shouldn't. First of all, is what we're about to say, is it true? Is it true or a lie? Well, a lot of people say, hey, I know the fact about this other person. It is true. Well, that's just the first question. Number two, is it needed? Is what I'm about to share needed? In other words, what's the motive? In other words, you're there to minister with a pastor so you can help this brother or sister in the Lord. You know, and your motive is to is to help that person because they're in need, they're in trouble, and and you want to help get steer them the right direction. So, what's your motive? Uh, is this needed to be shared, or do you just want to share it? The third one is: Is it beneficial? Is sharing it with this other person going to be beneficial for the person, not for you, but for the person that uh, it's about? Will it be beneficial for them? Is it going to help them? Is it going to encourage them somehow by you sharing it? And the last one, is it what I would want somebody to say about me? In other words, put yourself in their place. Would you want somebody sharing that about you with others? If you can't answer yes to all four of those, then you shouldn't share it. You shouldn't be doing that. And so that's our check of, of love for other people because, you know, even the verse, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, basically, uh, is, is what we need to do when it comes to, to this. If we're helping somebody, that's one thing, but most of the time it's not. It's just gossip. It's rejoicing in unrighteousness. The next one is, in verse 6, but, in other words, the opposite, it rejoices in the truth or with the truth. It rejoices with the truth. That's what it's focused on. Uh, it's God's word. Uh, Ephesians 4.15 says this, But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. We speak the truth in love. And so love rejoices in the truth. It doesn't, and when it's talking about truth, it's the biblical truth. What the Bible says is the truth. Um, 2 John 6 says, And this is love. What's love? That we walk according to his commandments. That's love. You walk according to what the Bible says. You live according to what the Bible says. You share things with others according to what the Bible says. The right doctrine, not the wrong doctrine. And so 
Uh, there's times that we're tempted to share something with somebody that'll make them feel good or that what they want to hear. Now, we always share the truth, but we share it in love. We don't share it condescendingly. We don't share it like we're better than somebody else. We don't share it like we've never uh, been tempted to do whatever it is they're about to do. You know, we share it in humility. And uh, think about all the things that we could be tempted to share wrong, you know, especially in this society. You know, even the, the discipline of, of a child. You know, none of us as parents want to, even when we talk about discipline, we're talking about biblical discipline. Uh, we don't want to do that, you know, but we know that we've got to train up the child in the way they should go. Um, and we do that. We're commanded to do that. But uh, many times society says, well, no, love is just not disciplining at all. Well, then you think, well, which is love? Love is the truth, what the Bible says. You know, people living together, you know, or premarital sex. You, know, you think, well, everybody's doing it, you know, and I guess if somebody's doing that, I'll just encourage them to do that because I love them. No, you encourage them in the truth because the truth is love. And so if we tell them, oh, that's great to be doing that, uh, then we're not sharing the truth and therefore we're not sharing love. People m marrying somebody that's not saved, you know, say, well, I guess they love them. Uh, no, the truth has to be, uh, no, that's not what the Bible wants us to do. And we, we state that. Uh, not forgiving somebody, you know, it's like, well, that sounds like they want revenge and I, I don't want to say anything, but we have to say, look, the, the biblical way is to forgive. I know they've done you wrong, but hey, we still have to forgive them. We're tempted to not maybe share the truth, but love is always in the truth. And it goes on and on. So many biblical principles we may be tempted not to share, but the Bible, the, the truth is what we always need to share because that always is showing love to somebody. You know, if somebody's about to drive off a cliff, you want to tell them, hey, you're about to drive off the cliff. You know, that's love. Uh, it's not saying, well, I don't know what they're going to think if I tell them this. You know, they may think I'm taking over the steering wheel. Uh, but you've got you've to be able to be honest and open and share the biblical truth according to God's word as it's listed in scripture. And so as we wrap up these two points, they kind of go together. We don't rejoice in unrighteousness. You know, we don't... Um, we don't take our sin and think, oh, it's okay, and even get to the point where we're so okay with it, we even tell others it's right. Or we don't point out other people's and rejoice with other people's sin when they fall and you feel good about it. You say, I'm glad they sinned. I didn't like them anyway. No, you don't rejoice in that. You feel bad when they sin, and you feel so bad you're sure not going to share it with everybody else because you want to conceal the batter because you want to show love. And then when it comes to sharing with people, you always want to share the truth. Not necessarily what we're talking about, a lie, but the truth of God's word. What God has revealed in his commandments. That's what we always want to share with people is the truth. They may not like us at first for it, but hey, we're going to show them love by always in, in humility, uh, speaking the truth in love. You know, say, hey, I may have been there. Hey, I've, I've been tempted to do this, but let me share with you the truth. So God's word's clear what it means to be able to love others. Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for lay, laying it all out, Lord, what true love looks like, what true love in action is. So Father, help us to, as we are tempted in different ways to ask these four questions when it comes time to sharing what we need to share with others, Lord, and that we would always, Lord, walk in your truth and share your truth, Lord, and not be tempted uh, to water it down, but to share it with others in humility, knowing that we're always tempted to sin as well, Father, and that we've been where they are and that we're no better than they are, but we can show love by speaking your truth at all times. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for loving us and being our ultimate example of what love looks like in action. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray you're blessed by that as we continue to add on these characteristics. We've got a few more we'll look at uh, next time we meet and uh, be able to find those other characteristics of love. But for now, I want to just give you a couple of 
closing announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, the Operation Christmas Child boxes, uh, they're due this Sunday, the 15th. So if you picked some up and got them packed up, be sure to bring them Sunday. Uh, there are deadlines because uh, uh, those uh, people that are in charge got to get it to the next step so that it can eventually get to the children. So there are deadlines. So if you did pick up a box, bring it back this Sunday so that it can uh, move forward. Also, uh, for the Magnolia campus, we'll have another Wednesday word in between uh, the spring campuses, Hanging of the Greens. Uh, Magnolia campus is this Sunday right after church. We have uh, such an early morning service at nine. Uh, there'll be plenty of time before lunch for those that would be willing to stay and set up uh, some decorations uh, for Christmas. So if you can do that, plan on staying a little longer. If you want to stay, if you can only stay 15 or 20 minutes, then just stay 15 or 20 minutes. If you want to stay 30, uh, stay 30. And nobody's pressuring anybody to stay any longer than that they'd be able to or want to. We are exempting our one morning uh, lift group. So our, that one morning lift group will go meet as normal, but everybody else that can and would like to, uh, right after the service is over, we'd, we'd love for you to help out. Uh, should be able to knock that out in little or no time and be on your way to lunch. So put that down to your calendar. Anyway, just want to let you know, uh, love you, praying for you, and we thank God for you, our church. Uh, we just th thank the Lord that he left us with the church. He didn't have us walk this walk alone. He gave us people to encourage us, lift us up, to hear the word, to worship together, to connect, to uh, develop friendships, to pray for one another and love one another. Just what a joy uh, having church that God uh, left us with such a, um, a great way to interact and walk this Christian walk, not by ourselves, but in unity with other believers. And I thank God for you and uh, pray for you and uh, just look forward to seeing you next time we meet. God bless.